the extent to which you're struggling to love your neighbor. And when I say your neighbor, don't pick the one you like. Pick the one you can't stand. That's the point of the Good Samaritan story. The point to which you're struggling to love other people shows you the direct correlation to the point in which you're struggling to accept God's love for you. So if you see other people and you go, I don't, I, I'm struggling with them because of the way they talk or the way they dress or the way they act or the way they respond or where they live or what they do, it might be in that area that you're struggling to believe that God loves you in spite of that stuff. That God loves you in spite of where you're from or what you do or how you look or the way you dress or the way you talk. He loves you anyway. And a lot of us are struggling with the areas that we, we don't know if God loves me or not. This is a really tough one for me because I want to get people to understand God loves them, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do to make somebody believe God loves them? I don't know that you can make someone believe God loves them. I believe that you can show them the love of God as expressed through the cross, that God loved humanity so much He would sacrifice Himself on our behalf because we needed something to die on our behalf. That's the whole point of the sacrificial system. I'm one who believes that God never got a whole lot out of the blood sacrificial system. I mean, you get to Isaiah and God tells Isaiah, I'm sick and tired of your, your lambs and your bullocks and your goats and your turtle doves and your pigeons. Come, let's reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they can be white as snow. That's incredible. Did you hear that? I'm tired of your sacrifices. Let's sit down and talk about it. I can do it by just talking. Jesus comes into a house. He's doing a house meeting. He's standing in the middle of the living room, and the plaster starts falling off the ceiling. And they lower a kid into the middle of the room. Remember this story from Mark? It's a paralyzed man. And they lower him by ropes into the middle of the room. And Jesus says to the boy, Son, your sins are forgiven. And all the religious people in the room lose their minds. And I used to think they lost their minds because here's Jesus being Jesus. And you can't let him be Jesus. No, they lost their minds because he didn't sacrifice a lamb or a turtle dove or a bull or a pigeon. He didn't put any money in for the upkeep of the priesthood. You're supposed to do all that stuff to get forgiveness of sins. Jesus skipped it all and went, son, your sins be forgiven. And they went, oh, how dare you say that? And Jesus says, just to let you know that I can say it. Watch this. Pick up your bed and walk. There's a, that's a big moment. That's a big moment. Because if you're not allowed to say, son, your sins be forgiven you, God's not going to bless you with the power to make that kid walk. This is going to be the moment where your whole ministry ends. Because you just were exposed to be a liar. And Jesus says, take up your bed and walk. And the boy gets up and walks. And it's not an indictment that he's able to heal. It's an indictment on them that he's able to forgive. He hasn't even died on the cross yet. How can he forgive sins without dying on the cross? You know what I think the cross is for? I think the cross is Romans 5. God, who while we were yet enemies, displayed his love for us and that Christ died for us. We're an enemy of God and God wants to show you he loves you, so he puts Jesus on the cross. Not because God's ticked off and needs appeased with another death, but because we need to see something die on our behalf. We need something to be cut off as part of our guilt and our sacrifice. And Jesus becomes the end of our need. Jesus hanging at Calvary becomes the purpose, becomes the expression of all of my guilt. I can then look at Jesus and go, wow, that was me dying there on that cross. And if that's me dying, and that's Paul's conclusion. That's 2 Corinthians 5. I thus conclude that if one man died, all men died. When Jesus died, I died right there with him. So what's it mean? It means God loved me so much that he put all of it into Jesus so that I wouldn't have to carry any of it around. Now, if you know you're that loved, how in the world are you not going to love people in your life? You won't be able to help it. You'll have something to give them. They won't have to jump up through your hoop. They won't have to live up to the standard. They won't have to be what you need them to be. They can just be, and you can love them. They can represent everything you can't stand, and you can love them. Because you'll remember that at one time you represented everything God couldn't stand and yet He loved you. And when you get that revelation, finally, on the other side of the cross, loving one another becomes a little easier to do. 
So as I sat that day in that crowd, and they said, what's the greatest commandment? And I heard the buzz, love the Lord your God. Your heart. And my heart, my little buzz was, the greatest commandment is the new one. Love people the way you know you're loved. If you don't know you're loved, you're probably not going to love people. If you know you're loved, you're not going to be able to help it. Because you're going to have something to give. Because you're going to know what is yours. And you're going to know it's not yours because you earned it. It's yours because he gave it to you. It's the gift of God. Just like your righteousness. And then giving that out becomes natural. It's why wherever you see Christianity look hateful or bigoted or cold, if you applaud it because you believe Christianity is standing up for something, you need to ask yourself if you're not the man asking Jesus, who's my neighbor? Wherever we justify coldness towards people because we think it's a standard that needs upheld, we just need to take a look at Jesus who never had anyone jump to the standard to be loved. And I believe if we can get back to where we have an expression of how loved we are, we'll start to have an expression of how loved people can be.